first day on the job at the St. Louis Cardinals, March 19th, 2006. I had been asked by the team to work with players and coaches to help them develop mental toughness needed to win a World Series in a 20 plus year period of time that the Cardinals had a drought. And the way it was put together, I was to go to Jupiter, Florida, spend a week with the team. That's where they have their spring training facility. And each day I was going to start with a two hour presentation with the players and coaches and then be available all day for individual work with players and coaches. And then they had me for 20 hours a week for the 2006 season. And it was uh, Tuesday morning, about 8.15 in the morning. It was the first morning. The first presentation was to start at 8.45. And I was in the general manager's office, Walt Jockety, and Walt looked at me and said, do you want to go meet Tony La Russa? I thought it was a little odd that I hadn't met Tony La Russa. Tony La Russa, if you're not a baseball fan, he's the manager of the team, the head coach, if you will. It was my first opportunity with the team, so I was really just kind of going with the flow. So Walt walks me into Tony La Russa's office, and to give you a visual of Tony La Russa's office, it's maybe 14 by 14, very bare bones, no paintings on the wall. I'm not even sure if there's paint on the wall, to be honest with you. The only thing in the office is a desk. And when Walt walks me in that morning, Tony is in his uniform, behind his desk, working on some paperwork. And uh, Walt walks me in and says, Tony, this is Jason Selk. He's going to do the sports psychology for the team this year. And Tony LaRussa barely looks up. I don't even think I get eye contact. And he goes back down to working on what he's working on. And then there's this weird, awkward silence in the room where Tony won't look at me. And now Walt won't look at me either. And I'm kind of thinking, this isn't the start I was hoping for. After about a minute, Tony LaRussa stands up. And he didn't have any pants on. OK, so. So talk about new level of humble. When a man with no pants puts you in your place, that's a new level of humility there. He, he stands up, walks around his desk, barely looks at me, and he says these words. You have 10 minutes. And I'm thinking, well, I've got a contract that says I'm going to be here for a week, and then you've got me 20 hours for the rest of the season each week. And I know that contract, there was space at the bottom for two signatures, but in that moment, for the life of me, I can only recall seeing one signature. Now, I'm no attorney, but I can put together pretty quickly, that's probably not a binding contract with just one signature. So I also realized, okay, I don't have a job with the St. Louis Cardinals. I've got an interview, and it's 10 minutes. And this poses all kinds of problems, because I've told just about everybody I get to listen, that I'm the new director of sports psychology for the St. Louis Cardinals. So originally, I thought I had two hours with you all. What I was going to cover was something I developed a few years back called the mental workout. There are five tools in the mental workout. It has since been scientifically proven to put you in a position to play better baseball more consistently. I won't have time to cover all five tools, but I will have time to cover one. And I launch into the first tool of the mental workout, something called centering breath. Now, there's also a pillar about right here. And on that pillar, there's a clock. And I swear, I can just hear every second ticking away on that clock. So I finish the first tool of the mental workout, the centering breath. And I look at the clock, and it's screaming at me that I've been up here for eight minutes, and I don't want to press my luck with Tony LaRusso. So I ask if there are any questions. And you know that silence? It's worse than silence, the crickets chirping. That's what goes on, it feels like, in my world for an eternity. And then thankfully, Dave Duncan, this is, by the way, why I consider him the greatest pitching coach of all time. <laughs> Dave Duncan raises his hand and says, would you teach the second tool of the mental workout? And I look at Tony LaRussa, and Tony LaRussa gives me the nod, and so I move into the second tool of the mental workout, something called a performance statement. So after I finish the third tool, the personal highlight reel, Chris Carpenter, again, Carpenter, had just won the 2005 Cy Young, which, uh, if you're not a baseball fan, means he's voted one of the top two best pitchers in all of Major League Baseball. You can make an argument in 2005, Carpenter's the best pitcher, hands down, in baseball. Nonetheless, he's one of the leaders on the team for all the right reasons. After I finish that third tool, Carpenter stands up, he takes about four or five steps forward, and he says these words. Says, everybody better pay attention because this is what it takes for us 
to take it to the next level. And I'm up front thinking, bah! right? But I start with my story of my time with the Cardinals for two reasons. Number one, I want everybody to know that I can get to listen. Those two World Series, 100% me, please tell everyone you can get to listen to you. No, uh, truth of the matter is, when I was with the team, I played a very small role, but I took that role very, very seriously. The real reason I start with the story of my time with the Cardinals, I've got this really cool job. I get to work literally with some of the most successful, mentally tough individuals, organizations walking the planet. Individuals like those mentioned, the St. Louis Cardinals, organizations like the St. Louis Cardinals, individuals like you, organizations like yours. And what's cool about my job is I'm always studying you folks. You see, I'm always watching you and looking for those patterns that cause you to outperform the competition. And it didn't take long with the St. Louis Cardinals before one of those patterns emerged. In fact, it was before I even got to the first question break. In the first six or seven minutes, something jumped out at me. Now, keep in mind, back in 2006, that very first day on the job, all those names I mentioned, I'm name dropping for a reason. Those are likely Hall of Famers. And what that means is they're literally the best in the world at what they do, at a very valued craft in this society. And I'm a complete nobody standing in front of them, just fighting for a job. And what I see six or seven minutes in totally shocks me. I'm looking around that room, and before we even get to that first break, every one of them is taking notes. And you want to guess who's taking notes most feverishly? Tony La Russa, man who knows more about baseball than anyone in that room combined. Now, I knew I was seeing something special, but I didn't have the right words for it until a couple years later. I was working with a guy in the NHL, he was one of the top players in the NHL, and I asked him this question. I said, why? Why are you this good this long? And I'll never forget his response. He said, I have an obsession for improvement. I thought, that's it. That's what I saw with the St. Louis Cardinals. In the first 10 minutes of my time there and consistently throughout the six years, Okay, and this is why I start with a story of my time with the Cardinals. See, this is what I know. Every one of you in this room, I'm guessing you have well over 10 other places you could be right now. And I'm also guessing every one of you had some really good reasons not to be here this morning. But you see, every single one of you is here. And that, to me, is an indication of that obsession for improvement. And I'm going to talk to you about one other pattern that I see with highly successful people. It's something called RSF, Relentless Solution Focus. And I tell you, I think this is probably the ultimate measure of mental toughness. So let's just kind of cover it. I'm going to try to hit some of the really important pieces. First thing I want to give you is a definition, okay? Again, it's RSF, or the Relentless Solution Focus. Here's the definition. If you write one thing down from what I say today, write this down, please. This is a really important piece of the performance puzzle. Highly successful people are very good at this. Here's the definition for RSF. Within 60 seconds, those are the first few words of the definition. Within 60 seconds, replace all negative thinking with solution-focused thought. Within 60 seconds, replace all negative thinking with solution-focused thought. All right, let me use this as a visual. I want you to think of it this way. If we open up all of our heads and looked inside, what we'd find is what I call this mental chalkboard. Okay, and over on this side, you've got problem focus, and over here, you've got solution focus, all right? Now, over here, there's a term for this. It's called PCT, and it really is the number one obstacle to mental toughness. I want you to be very aware of how your brain works. PCT is a biological tendency every one of us has. We're all built this way. 
It's a biological tendency to focus on problems. If you focus on the negative, you're not broken, you're normal. It's biological, it's PCT. Now, the issue is, when we allow ourselves to focus on our problems, we actually create more negative, more problems in our world. It's called expectancy theory. Whatever you focus on will expand. Right now, the great thing about expectancy theory, it works every bit as well over on this side of the board. What we have to learn to do is, when we have a problem, which all of us are going to have a problem, everyone's going to have problems as part of our existence. What we have to learn to do is we have to learn to cross this line and we have to learn to do it within 60 seconds. Let me explain the importance of that 60 seconds. When you allow your brain to do what's normal, which is to focus on problems. Let me real quick give you an example of PCT. All right. The most valuable resource known to our species. More valuable than all the cash, all the goods, all the you name it. Oxygen. Now, when is the last time you thought to yourself, this is great. <laughs> Isn't life wonderful? I've got an abundance of the most valuable resource. You see, your brain's not built to do that. Now, compare that with when's the last time you thought to yourself, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough love. I don't have enough respect. I don't have enough you fill in the blank. You see, that's PCT, that's biologically ingrained. But the issue is, by doing what's normal, you create more of the negative. And let me explain why. When a person is focused on their problems, their brain releases neurotransmitters into the bloodstream. Those neurotransmitters biologically cause you to feel like garbage, they significantly limit your creativity, your intelligence, all mental capabilities. Biological, you can't get around it. That's why when you allow yourself to focus on negative, you're going to create more negative in your world because you're handicapping yourself. You're poisoning yourself from the inside. All right, now the key is we've got to learn to get across this line and we've got to do it quickly. How long? And, that, and, and again, when you catch yourself here, don't say, okay, I've got 60 seconds to really feel sorry for myself. No, no, that's not what this is about. It's when you're here, get over here as fast as you can because we know the faster the better. If you can get over here within 60 seconds, you're going to stay ahead of those neurotransmitters. There are actually four questions you want to answer on a somewhat regular basis. If you did it three days a week, that'd kind of be your bare minimum of greatness. If you did it three days a week, it'd be your bare minimum of greatness that you'd start to see this become more normal than this. Now, I don't have time to cover all four of the questions, but I will cover one. <laughs> We're not going to play that game today. I got a plane to catch. Okay, so here's the first question. In my opinion, it's the most important for our species, especially right now. You write down on paper and you take no more than 60 seconds. If 60 seconds expires and you haven't answered the question fully, you've already won. Just having your brain think about the answers for 60 seconds is the training. Here's the question. What have I done well in the last 24 hours? Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you gave yourselves credit for anything? I know the answer to that and so do you. So I'm gonna challenge you. For one month, I want you to take one minute, minimum of three times a week, and write down on paper three things you've done well. You don't have to cure cancer for it to qualify as a done well. Anything that promotes personal or professional health, even by one inch, counts. I'm going to close up shot and say this final thing. There is no doubt you are making an impact in this world. You are making a difference and you're not giving yourself credit, the credit you deserve. And it's a reality. It's not fair, but it is a reality. You're not going to get it from other people. You've got to learn to do it yourself. Recognize those things you're doing well. Start to train your brain to get more over on this side of the board. Thanks for all you do. Keep it up. Go get them out there.